Hello. Welcome. Good day. It's stream time again. Jumping right into it. Had some good momentum in the last day. Closed about, I don't know, 20 issues in the issue tracker that were legitimately solved and just remained unopened. Um, big thanks to Gonzo for his help with that and kind of identifying, you know, what needed to be closed. It's a big help. Um, so yeah, without further ado, jumping right into that. Started off today uh, looking at this, which we solved just before ending the stream yesterday. And it will be fixed, as I noted down here in the 5.5 release. And was taking a look at this one, and uh, indeed the plugin is dirty. Hey, Santa. It's a pleasure to see you. Thank you for joining today. I hope you're doing okay. Hey, Gonzo. Welcome, my friend. Thanks for being here today. Just uh, getting right into it with, uh, you know, I mentioned we had some momentum. I think yesterday we closed 20, maybe more issues. I didn't count exactly, but like... It's got me feeling good, you know? Um, so let's get some of these other ones. These are easy ones, right? We talked about this yesterday. This plugin is indeed dirty. It's got some good old ambient light and water height changes. Our favorite arbitrary junk, the vanilla CS likes to put into plugins. Yes, yes, heck yeah, issue cleanup. So uh, moving on then. Let's get right to it. And if I remember, I put these in the fixes category. Here it is, okay. So. All right, and yeah, the note we're adding here is, we're gonna add that it needs cleaning, and what I've done in a lot of other mods, let's find something on the website. I think I actually started saying the plugin is dirty rather than saying needs cleaning. The plugin is dirty, yeah. Okay, so I do I do something like this in the usage notes. I will have a click to expand kind of thing that has the TES3 command output, shows what's cleaned, you know. I think this is good. And also to like collapse it by default, right? Because like saying it needs cleaning conveys a different meaning than saying it's dirty. They're both factually correct. I think saying it's dirty is better. Yes, I've overthought this. <laughs> uh, so anyway, I want to do that for uh, dynamic distant buildings over here. Um, and as a reference, I'm going to look at what I put for Mask of Dagathur. It's cargo cult, cargo cult my own code. But I believe it's a, uh, um, yeah, here we go. It's pure HTML, which is the nice thing about it. This This good old details and summary element combination. We're going to stuff that in here. Uh, oh, yeah, but first we need to put the needs cleaning field on here. Put this into a paragraph. Compatibility Platchet exists. Wow, we get to, we get to do this too. Uh, Also reminds me, maybe we should put that uh, in 5.5. We should put the the fix for the wheel in Satanine. I consider that like a bug fix, you know. And it can be safely added into any game, really. You're just moving the wheel around. And, it's, and it jives with the latest BCOM. So, yeah, we're going to do that, too. Mm. Cool. Thanks for the feedback, Gonzo. Yeah. I think it makes sense. I don't want to bloat with too many additions, you know, but uh, this is like, you know, <laughs> fixing something that's quite awkward. Like, I never noticed it until I tried to put myself in the game right there, and then I was just like, ooh, dear God, what is that? <laughs> it was hideous. Okay. Compatibility 
have to move on here. Okay. And then we're going to put the dirty note down here. Which I got to remember. I got to remember to review yesterday's stream and kind of slice out the little section where we were talking about cleaning and stuff. And maybe in a future stream we can make the cleaning page on my website actually useful to somebody who doesn't already know all of that. Oh, and another thing we could do too that's probably pretty easy. Um, I don't think I'll do it before 6.0, but we should um, have the thing where the CFG generator prepends clean, you know, for stuff that needs cleaning. Gonzo says the practical demonstration was super helpful. Awesome. I'm glad. It's like, a, you know, it re it's a thing that requires some knowledge of how the engine is implemented. You have to know about objects and instances and references and masters and this kind of a thing and so there's just a lot of prerequisite knowledge for it to make any sense to you mm -hmm. really 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 like this um summary element html element it's pretty cool always like being able to do stuff like that collapse the section without any javascript And let's go, uh, let's get ourselves the cleaning output. Since we're in like a cleaning mode, should have this one already in here. Let's see, HM, yep. Here's my personal no deletes edit. All right. Indeed. Just like Nico said. And I am, you know, yesterday I talked about when to not clean. For example, with my patch for this one, I'm almost 100% positive this is a safe cleaning. You know, anything ambient light or water height, like there's no way that could break the game. At worst, you could like set the water to a level where it was not intended, which could, you know, I'm thinking of a specific temple quest that could break and maybe other things. All right. Yeah. And that's what we want. <clears throat> Okay, and got to have that change log entry. And yeah, the more issues we're knocking out, we're really like, got to seriously start thinking about 6.0 and figuring out all the things we're going to, you know, we're going to add. I mean, there's just so much. I was going through my own config yesterday in the evening trying to be like okay what have I what all have I added and it's like <laughs> I don't know well well into 50 things maybe more um Gonzo says do you think there should be a generic changelog entry for all the small little issues that got cleaned up or just forget about it. Yeah, that's a really good point. I was thinking about that the other day and then I forgot to bring it up again. So I'm glad you said something. And so correct me if I'm wrong, but what you're thinking about maybe is like a, so we got a change log for the mod lists, right? But we don't have a change log for like janky things in the website in general. Is that kind of like what you were thinking about? Because that's what I was thinking about. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, I mean, you know what? Let's do that today. Let's Let's begin the website change log today um let's take a minute let's get this wrapped up and let's take a minute and think about yeah exactly cfg generator fix added documentation yeah this is important to convey to people rather than leaving it to them to discover let's wrap this up and um let's spec this out that's a really good call out gonzo thank you so much Oh, Python. Okay. Let's recrunch that website. 
as is tradition, because I definitely want to see this uh, real quick. Um, just need to message my wife real quick. I need something to drink. <laughs> All right, I don't want to get up. We got a stream going on here. She's my adoring fan. She helps me stay nourished. All right. So, yeah, okay. Crunching the mod list. <clears throat> Bye, Azura. Indeed. All right, so let's sneak this in here. Uh, website general change log. Trying to think now, uh, you know, like what should the URL be? Should it just be slash change log? I don't think so. It should be a different namespace. Website change log, maybe. <laughs> yeah, Gonzo says, for as much in your ear as the adoring fan got you, you can't say he wasn't memorable. And I agree. And actually, somebody made the adoring fan mod for MWSE Lua. And I think in a prior discussion with Erm last year, we were like trying to bang out Open MW Lua mods for the Modathon. And he had like a list of things Anton Uramer did of like uh, M MWSE Lua mods that could be reasonably ported to Open MW Lua. And, uh, I personally banged out, I think, one or two. Um, but yeah, there was like a d half dozen, and um, Adoring Fan was one of them that apparently could be ported to OpenMW Lua. So hey, maybe we'll take a look at that someday. I love writing me some Lua. It's a fun little language. What did I do? <laughs> okay. It's line 44. Uh... Mm, okay, yeah, I broke my own website. This is why this is a bad system. I'm going to crap on my own code a little bit now like I usually do. There we go. Thankfully, I've shot myself in the foot in this exact way many times before. But if you weren't me, you'd be like, oh my god, what's going on? <clears throat> Pardon me. So yeah, what should the URL for this be? Hmm. One lousy comma and it's all busted, Gonzo says. And yes, that's all it takes. In this case, it was a bad copy pasta. I put the, the stuff inside the curly braces outside of the parentheses, inside of a different parentheses, and that's wrong. That's so wrong. So, so wrong. Because the generate change log function expects to have a, um, yeah, a string and a tuple. Tuple however you say that as the as the argument. So yeah, I gave it like a string and two tuples. Don't even know my own code. Really, that was just a bad copy paste. Trying to save time by copy pasting and losing it in the end. Let's open up the URL page while I'm waiting. And we're gonna figure out where this change log should fit. So okay, actually, hey, look at this. Past me already built change logs into a namespace so we can just have it be like this and so it'd be change logs website right now it's change logs mod list name um to see the mod list change logs so now it'd be change logs website to see the website change log i think that makes sense and that's what i'm gonna do Right, okay. Yeah, it's just a static page right now. Okay. I'm not going to save because I don't want my tests up here to blow up, even though they're taking an obscenely long amount of time to crunch. Cool. Just need to save and I think and then create this HTML file here. I think we're good to go. All right. 
with that, I'm going to save it. Let's take a look what we got. Oh, huh. That's not quite right. What did I do? Oh. Yeah. Details. Yeah, okay. I'm missing the key element here. Just for my own visual sanity, I'm indenting it. Don't judge me. That's what we were missing. Now it should do the thing I expect it to do. And I'm going to actually cut the tests out for now. Tests aren't quite as trusty as they used to be when they were when we had the Selenium tests in the mix, which I still want to fix someday, but it's not really that much of a priority. These tests at least save us from the obvious foot guns of putting things in the wrong order and, and what have you. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's also the wrong date. Let's fix that. Quite a few more lists using it. Didn't get to change logs yet. Maybe it'll catch this. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and this is gonna state various fixes that are not specific. Very good. Very good. Oh, ho, oh, hey, ho. Oh. That's <laughs> too much. Whoops. Whoops. Yet another bad copy pasta. Just ignore it. We'll pretend this isn't here because I just deleted it. There you go. That's That's what we wanted to show. Let's go ahead and check the change log. Let's go here. We don't usually go here. Let's go here. One lousy little update. Gotta say, there's something to these small mod lists. You get to enjoy the game with extra features. You don't have to go too crazy. Wait a minute. Oh, it didn't. Okay, it didn't. Must not have catch, caught that because I crunched it out uh, before I made the change. All right, well, with all that, let's jump back over to here. And yeah, okay, so the, this is just going to be, I think for all intents and purposes, just static HTML is going to do just fine. We'll have, um, I suppose we could group website changes under the same kind of release numbering as the mod list, you know, so this would be 5.5 .5 release changes for the website. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, we'll have to look at the commit log to know what all has been added. Um, so let's... What do we got here? Thing change log... Oh man, did I do it again? I did. I didn't save the file. For shame. Excuse me. All right. 
let's get this taken care of before I jump too deep into something else. Only minimal diversions on the route to that one. All right. This will be great because this is a website I won't need to... I'm sorry, this is a page I won't need to recrunch the whole thing for. Which, on that note, let's keep that in view. Let's just see what we got right now, rather than try to think about it too much. Cool. Maybe it's worth having a little note here. Okay. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. And it I don't think I don't think we need to specify like dates or anything for these. I think it's just a unordered list like what we got here saying all the things we did. And on that note, let's take a look at the commit log. give myself a reminder of what all we've done. Okay. All right. Might as well throw a link in there. And might as well do it right using the Django sauce here, URL uh, thing, which basically lets me name a URL and then it fills in the, <clears throat> the path. So if we ever change the path and I'm doing it this way, there won't be a bunch of grief about changing links, which I complain about often, as you may recall. In my mob data, I have to hard code all these links and it's just terrible. Wait times for responses. Yes. That would be a mod. <sighs> this commit message makes me laugh looking at it now a day later. Woof.
Whoops. <laughs> All right, fine. Fair enough. I'll do the slug. I should have known better. There we go. And again, just a, just a note about, you know, Python, Django, HTML programming. Yeah, the cool thing we got here is instead of hard coding the URL, I got this little bit here. And we say, we say you know, the tag we're using is this little feature called URL. Mod detail is the name of the URL, which we can see right here. I have named it explicitly in the URL file, the router, as it were. And uh, and it, the router takes an argument here. That's what this syntax means in the brackets here. It takes a syntax called slug. Um, that's the name of the... Uh, it takes an argument called slug, and that's the name of the argument. Um, and then, yeah, here I'm giving it the slug, which in, you know, website development parlance is referring to, yeah, just like a, a path in the URL. And then, yeah, so then it renders out to the actual URL that we want. And if I ever change that, if I ever change the path, which I never will, probably, um, but it just feels good to do that if I ever change it, you know, much cleaner than using raw, H2, raw URLs. Gonzo says, yes, indeed. It's one of the things that's cool about web frameworks like Python. Uh, I'm sorry, like Django. Um, I'm sure Ruby on Rails has its own mechanism for this. Flask, you know, um, it's a th problem that is widely solved and, uh, and it's a cool way to solve it, I think. All right. Um. Capitalization. That is kind of mod specific, but it was a problem of. No, it wasn't a problem of the CFG generator. I'm erasing that. That's not going on there. Am I missing something else, Gonzo? Let me know. I I mean, you know, not a problem to have like a concise change log, but yeah, I don't want to I don't want to omit anything, but I mean doesn't seem like there's much else there. Um well hey, we can have that we added the change log to the change log. Of course. Why not? But there's one problem. Gonzo says it's a great start. I can't really remember any other details other than just GitLab issue cleaning, which doesn't necessarily warrant an entry. I agree. Um, that's important to note, but uh, eh, I don't think it's important to note here now. But we do have one other problem, which is how do people find this page? We can't very well expect them to type the URL like I did. <laughs> that's silly. Um, we can start by adding it to, so this thing right here, you may have noted this little bit right here. And what that little code include does is that's what puts this little row of buttons there. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna add a, we love buttons on this website, we're gonna add another button. Mods, nav, here we go. Okay, and yeah, so I got some logic in here to specially render, you'll notice this is like a disabled button because we're on that page, if I go here, that one's disabled. If I go here, oof. Okay, ignore that. But yeah, um, so yeah, we're gonna add a button here for this one.
boom. Just like that, on all these pages now, we got the button. That's the beauty of this little include thing here. I love it. And yeah, you'll notice too, giving it, uh, boom. Yes, Santa Hools, indeed. I'm like Emerald Lagasse over here. Kick it up a notch. If you don't know who that is, don't feel bad. Change logs website. And yeah, you'll see here I, I had even giving the include an argument. It's super flexible. It's one of the reasons why I love Django and working with Django, even if it was overkill for this website. It's just such a cool framework. Whoop. There we go. The right, the right button is disabled because I do have to tell it what the URL is. Maybe there's a way for it to just know from the request. Maybe I could make my own tag. Definitely venturing into the realm of thinking about it too much. It does. Gonzo says, dang, that really makes it so easy. And yeah, that's exactly why Django's awesome. And and again, other frameworks and other languages, you know, you got Ruby on Rails for Ruby and stuff. Other Python framework, frameworks like Flask. These problems have been solved in really great, cool ways. Man, yeah, I guess that's it, really. If we look at the code that was required to implement this right here, there it is, all of it. And just kind of, for those of you who aren't really familiar with Django, I mean, this is this is really the flow of it is we have this file, the URLs file, which is our router. And this is where we define like all the all the URLs. That would be this thing, the different parts of the websites you go to. And we just stuck another route in there and it's gotta it's gotta be, you know, it's top down, so you know, I, I stick it next to the other change logs part. And indeed when we do the change log detail page I talked about yesterday, we'll stick that right here in the middle. Um, but yeah, we're telling the website we got this URL. The view is confusingly <sighs> the the controller in the model view controller pattern, which is what Django uses. Django calls their view what the controller is, and Django's view is the templates. So they basically mixed up the words for fun of it. Um, but anyway, so this would be the controller. Ruby on Rails uses the right terms. This would be the controller. This would be the view. Django calls it the template. And yeah, this is just the name I gave it. Totally optional, but now we can refer to it, um, you know, like this. Or or if I pull up the, the nav, we can refer to it like this by name instead of by path. Nice and easy. Nice and dry, which is programmer parlance for don't repeat yourself, which is not a religion, but it's a decent thing to keep in mind, right? The world isn't going to end if you repeat things a couple of times, but like really should get your brain thinking, am I doing something wrong? Yeah, so that's the feature really. Good idea, good call out Gonzo. And yeah, this took us like less than 10 minutes to implement, so I feel pretty good about it. Uh, give the website a general change log. Ooh, you know what? Due diligence must be done. Let's see if we can put in a test for this. Here we go. We really want this because at least we can, to some degree of certainty, we can make sure that without actually going and looking at the page that it, it's not going to blow up for somebody. Um, hmm. I do have some. Wait, I do have some CFG generator tests. I thought I had none. Look at that. We got two here, it looks like. And technically, these are extensions of CFG generator tests because they test the data that goes in there. So, wow, okay, I'm in a better place than I thought. That's good. Thank you, past me. Data order, yeah, okay. Oh, man. When was the last time I even looked at this code? Sheesh. Anyways. website 
Is that what I called the file? I can't even remember. Is there an underscore? I have a bad habit of not being consistent with that. Change logs underscore website. <clears throat> Might as well keep the tradition going. All right. There you go, match test. And what we're doing now, what I'm doing right now. I'm going to run just that test. So we don't have to wait for all the other tests to run just to get feedback about if this one was good. And this is how you do it. With Django comes with uh, this little script called manage.py. And it's your, as the programmer, basically entry point into the application. You don't just run like IPython or Python and have a context for your website program uh, project. You have to you have to use this manage.py script, which has just a little bit of boilerplate to add your project into Python path and do a couple other things. And so this is how you tell it just to run just one test. I'm glad I thought of this. We're really hurting for tests right now. Excuse me, chewing on some blueberries. Once this is good, I'll go ahead and commit that, and we can call that done. Just to run one test. Oof, okay, there we go. Hey, ho. All right. Good to go. So now what we're doing here, just to kind of go over what we're doing here, for those of you who don't know about HTTP stuff, where... Uh, not actually loading the website in a browser, but we're doing a, a headless, meaning without a browser, an HTTP request using some stuff that's built into like Django's test. That's a self get and uh, reverse is we're basically telling it to resolve this named URL to the actual URL. And um, we're set, just setting up an anonymous, we're faking an anonymous user to the website. Nobody logs into this website anyways. Um, the response basically is where we're loading up the, the view to process the page. And then we're saying, okay, the status code has to be HTTP okay. Now, this is a low-level de low level detail about websites and the internet in general that you may not be aware of, but you can do something like this. And every request to any website that you do at present is a series of requests and responses. You, the user, send a request and the server sends back a response, which is the thing that you hope to get, the website, whatever. And in the response, what you're seeing here is what's called an HTTP header. Every response, every request has a header with just some data in there. And every response has a status code. And back here, we say HTTP OK. 200 is the response for OK. When you load a website and everything's good to go, you got HTTP OK. So what we're saying here is load the page, make sure it's good. If something's bad, for example, let's break it. Well, Johnny, how do you break it? Let's see. Let's break it. Um. If I do something like, I don't know. I just like make up a, a fake tag that doesn't exist. Huh? Hopefully it doesn't take all day to load like it did before. There we go. Wait. Yeah, it still might take a minute. But anyway, this should fail. This so way up here, we had a ran one test. Okay. This is, should blow up and give us a big, ugly failure output. And so what the test guarantees us is that, you know, we can't do anything to break the, the page working. Hopefully. 
the the test that actually opens the web browser and looks at it is like I think the final you know layer of confidence we have to be 100% sure we're not breaking anything but this is like pushing us into the realm of being pretty reasonably sure everything's okay and it happens automatically when we go to um boom there we go oof <laughs> so if we break something we're gonna know yeah errors one <laughs> and and yeah it's like key error. it doesn't know what i did i typoed it you know i maybe i could type urz instead of url or, or anything any kind of silly mistake would be caught by this most kinds probably um i won't say any but if we go for example oops did i open that yeah i already opened that up if we go for example to here you can see I have this kind of uh, just happening. We can look at the merge request pipeline that I got going here, but I, every Git commit that I push up to GitLab runs the, these tests on the server. And so every time I push, if I would have pushed this jankiness up, then this would have failed. And where there's a green check mark, there would be a red X, which is obviously bad. <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, this would be a red X. Um, it would block if it weren't already blocked here because it's a draft. Um, it would be blocked because of failing CI. By the way, Gonzo, too, I think um, there should be some way for you to like approve. Don't do it right now because we're going to be pushing more changes up to here. But like when everything's good to go, um, you know, I got you on the review team here. I think there's like a button you can click somewhere. Your user interface is going to look different than mine because I cannot approve my own merge request. Makes sense. But it should be somewhere on here. Um, let's go ahead and take this out of draft. It's going out of draft today. This is going to be the real deal. Yeah, poke around for it. I mean, if you don't find it, it's not a big deal. I think I could. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I configured it so we need the approval. It's got to be in there somewhere. Um, yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, commit this. I'm really proud of myself for making a test for that. Then I thought to do it. Um, no, we don't want that change. That's garbage. All right. So again, let's review, including the tests. I mean, this is all the code for the change. It fits basically on one side of the screen. Looks good. So what I would do in the future then when we have the tests that actually open the browser, one thing I would do in the future is I would say, let's actually check for this text here that says website change log let's check for specific things on there you know um for now it's enough to say that the page won't blow up and that's good all right Boom. Big blue button that says approve. Awesome. Yeah, that's it. That's it, my friend. That is it. So when we're good to go, um, you know, after the stream, uh, we'll probably make sure everything's good to go. And then, uh, you know, before too long, definitely before end of day today here, my time in the United States, uh, we'll have that update out there. Our second release together. High five or fist bump or whatever. Thanks, Gonzo. General, okay, issues backlog. Let's go back to this. I feel like I'm forgetting something that I didn't write down. Anyway. All right. We want to add, so we got a discussion here going on. And... um this is the old interiors are completely blanked out. And yeah, I think the takeaway from this is we're going to we're going to advise to toggle interior mist to fix this. Or maybe maybe we'll just say in the usage notes if interiors are black go into the shader settings. Crank down interior mist. Done. All right. Volumet. 
trick. What do we got here right now? I don't want to make it too. Okay. Yeah. meaning. So I think just another paragraph here saying, you know, the, th the symptom and, and how to fix it. Okay. What the? How did I do that? I somehow magically lowercase the word true there. It's definitely an Emacs feature. Um, I just don't remember the, the key binding. I must have accidentally hit it. Santa, you still there? You there with me? When are you going to play Morrowind already? Morrowind already? When are you going to do it, man? Just tell me. Soon. I don't think we're going to be able to be friends anymore. You made me lose my train of thought. <laughs> yeah, tra TM. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just messing. Santa is a real life friend of mine. We've known each other for like a quarter of a century, probably. I think that's accurate. <laughs> All right. Kyo Sten, since high school, yep. Close to a quarter of a century, for sure. Kyo Sten, when will then be soon? Oh, that was hard to read. <laughs> You know, and I'm going to actually link back to this GitLab issue so people can refer to the discussion that we're having on there because there's, I think, some good context. Um, Hey, Sten, by the way. <laughs> Glad to see you here. So, not much, my friend. We're just doing the thing we doing the same thing we do every weekend, Pinky. Try to update the website. Oh, thank you. You don't have to worry about getting on camera, my wife. She's like doesn't want to get on camera. Ah, good. Yes, that's a Shenmue reference. Okay. <clears throat> if you experience black screens and interiors, you may need to turn down the interior mist setting in the shaders config menu if you have to. Please see this issue for more information. Boom. Sign it. Thumbs up it. Oh, come on. GitLab, as a, uh, and I'm a big fan of GitLab, and the company is very generously giving me a free Ultimate subscription as an open source project, and I'm big thank you and gratitude to GitLab. But their website is trying to be, like, dynamic and all the things, except for when it's not dynamic, and, like, the clash of that frequently annoys me. Can we just have a version of the website that works without JavaScript, please? Anyway, I'm just kidding, but not. I love you. Mm, okay, we need to put a change log in for this. Hm. Let's not make the same mistake twice in the same stream. How about... You know, I don't have shaders really on iHeart Vanilla, and I wonder if I should. I mean, I personally play with shaders on iHeart Vanilla, and it's part of what makes it, like, awesome. I wonder if I should add that.
know what? Let's bring. Let's bring the tests back into the mix. It's only a couple of extra seconds in theory. Excuse me. And so I wanted to note too. We I ended the stream yesterday looking at the welcome to the arena mod and and aiming to fix problems with it. And to be fair, um, the only problems I found with it were warnings in the CS, which in theory a warning shouldn't break the mod. And there was feedback from some users on Discord, Johannes, thank you so much, that the mod worked fine for them. So I'm thinking I might spend some time and actually play it myself again with the BCOM version because um, I haven't played it since the BCOM version was kind of, you know, instituted on mod lists. And let's just see if it actually is broken. There was discussion on Discord that it, saying it was broken. How broken is it? What is broken? W without these, you know, without this specific knowledge, it's kind of, you know, a moot effort. So that's been shelved. I might actually revert the commit to my patches repo or maybe branch it off, but certainly revert it on master. Um, and yeah, so we're, we're just going to leave that as is. And I'm not going to be returning to that. I put that in the um, future section of the notes for the stream notes. All right. Very good. Yeah, so I guess the to-do list is a little less useful today. I kind of like... I'm using this as a as a catch-all for just swatting down other things. Uh, boop. No, don't try this at home. That's not what I wanted to do. This this is what I wanted. Let's go ahead and actually Oh, okay, good. Except for I wanted to actually look at it. Oh, it's just talk really. Hmm. That's interesting. Do I have like an old version of this or something? Cause let's just go to potato performance land for a moment here. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. Because, yeah, I was actually resorting to, like, going into my... Before I knew about turning down interior, interior MISC, I was resorting to going into my config and actually switching off the cloud shader altogether. Which is a bit annoying to go back and forth, you know. <clears throat> but I seem to recall that this is a sliding bar thing. But let's have a look. All right. This my laptop chokes a little bit on total overhaul. My Intel Potato GPU, which... Honestly, has no business running even this good, in my opinion. But anyways, that's neither here nor there. All the way down at the bottom. It's in potato mode, but it is sliding. So yeah. And uh, let's, just for posterity, let's go inside. If we can crawl in here. Oof, all right. Tiny bits better. 
So like this looks normal, but if I were to load straight in here, it would be all black. Okay, so this doesn't look normal. This looks very bad. Like there's a fire in here somewhere <laughs> right now. Um, you wouldn't really normally turn this feature all the way up. You would have it be a little more modest. Or just off altogether. Um, but yeah, if you were to spawn right in here, it would be a blank screen. You could see the HUD elements, but you wouldn't see anything else. So yeah. Let's take another quick look at what I wrote. Turn it down. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think that's I think that's fair. All right. Moving on. Okay, yeah, this was I think a a good call out. Because for Beautiful Cities of Morrowind, Morrowind, for example, let's take a quick look at that one. Yeah, so we're telling folks, put the patches files into a folder called patches. And I think what Andrej here... Andre, I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. I think what they're getting at here is that the patch for weapon sheathing should also go into a patches folder too. Uh, because I think we're probably even saying, we may even say that. Let's see. We may even say, put the patches in a patches folder. Uh, well, we don't. Um... So how do I even, how do I have this right now? Let's see here. Hmm. So. Right. Of course. Must have had the wires crossing your head. You're no, don't worry about it, Gonzo. It's good. Sanity checking back and forth. It's good. It's a good dynamic. Okay, so this is interesting. Um, hmm. Let's let us go. Three oh five. Okay, so you know what? I think we goofed by putting this into uh I think we goofed by putting this into the um the weapon sheeting folder cuz it is a separate mod and not packaged into it. Eee, whoops, good call out there, Andre. Um very good call out. That is a uh, Okay, let's fix that. Um, cause yeah, it's the, I probably had my wires crossed in this case because this one right here, the graphic herbalism patch for glass close, it comes with GH, whereas the weapon sheathing patch separate mod altogether. Yeah. Yeah. We were a little, so this no go. That was a mistake. And really, this should go into the patches, glass glow set weapon sheathing patch folder. Um, rather than into a subfolder of the weapon sheathing, because it would, it would, the whole idea of doing the subfolders thing with the patches, for example, with the BCOM patches, is because that's how they come with the mod as a download with the mod. So it really makes sense to put them that way. This being a separate mod, it doesn't really make sense, I don't think. 
Now, in the future, we're going to allow people to put their own folder paths in, so it won't matter. So I'm sure I have a change log entry for this. Let's go ahead and class glow set weapon shooting match. Oop. Yeah, like clockwork, a week later, realizing my mistake. <laughs> oh, whoops. Revert the previously. What can I say? Whoops. Now let's um let's check our work. Whoops. No, 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 no. Check our work here. But yeah, I'm I'm sure that I messed that one up because I just was kinda like autopilot and thinking uh you know the glad the um the graphic herbalism patch for this one comes with graphic herbalism so i guess i guess that's how i messed it up who knows who cares we'll just move on and so this would be issue number 205 i will tag and uh later on i'll respond and clarify in the issue kind of what i described here and I will rationalize the, the simply removing the custom path and going back to the old one because they're separate, actually separate downloads, separate mods, everything separate. So it makes sense to put them that way. One of the things, by the way, one of the things I want to do, uh, Gonzo, is definitely try to, in 6.0, we're revamping this page. And I logged some of the ideas we had uh, last weekend. You and War had a lot of really great feedback about how we can improve this and make the overall experience better. And that's some, like one of the first things I want to do for 6.0 is redesign this page, make it more logical, make key things easier to find. So yeah, put that thinking cap on. No, I did do the date. Oh, no, wait. Mm. That's a valid date? I guess it takes the 1 as a just a 1. But really, like, it should be 01 and, like, 06. So 1, like, this is not a really a valid date, is it? I'm not going to think about it too much. Boom. Back there. All right. I like it. Okay. So cool. This is another one that will be closed with 5.5. .5. Awesome. I think we got like four that we, we're closing up today. Um, I guess this is another case of interior mist, huh? So we'd be closing this one too, probably. This should be a uh, pretty easy one to bang out. Some of these are already fixed, like this one. But you know what? I 
actually need to run to the restroom. Please excuse me and forgive me. I will be right back. We're back. I guess I didn't mute my mic. Boo. We're back. All right. <clears throat> Sorry about that. All right. So let's... Let's get this data. Hey, thank you, Gonzo. Gonzo says, hey, welcome back. Thank you so much. Glad to be here. Clean adamantium armor. Let's do adamantium. And uh, let's. I'm trying to think where I. I must have an old version of this. Huh. I got to check that out. Right, because it's oh, okay. I see. It is a dirty, it's a dirty plugin, and uh, this is just an inconsistency where I must have I must have given it the clean name, but it doesn't ship that way. Okay, okay. There's that. It's good. Mystery solved. Excuse me. Beautiful cities of Morrowind. Legacy. So for this one, okay. This is what we fixed yesterday. The original mod is with a lowercase. The BCOM patch is with an uppercase. This is my second favorite Windows Unix discrepancy next to line endings. This is my number one favorite. And by number one, I mean I hate it. TR BCOM patch. So it is. I'm glad you agree, Gonzo. I work with mostly people that use Windows, and um, having I work I use Windows too for work, 
but I use WSL to actually use Linux. But we still have to contend with like the line endings thing in our Git repos. It's something I'd rather not think about, but here we are. All right. Good call out here, steadiness. I really appreciate it, man. This one is duplicated. This might be fixed. Did we fix this? I feel like we fixed this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We'll just sanity check here. One of one match. How about that? How about that? To quote my friend Doc Mitchell from my probably second favorite Bethesda game, Fallout New Vegas. That's another one you gotta play, Santa. You hear me, guy? I'm tired of the excuses. All right. All right. I play games, yes. He says, yeah, I know. You play like those Batman games, which are probably cool too, but nobody's got time for Batman when Morrowind exists. What's wrong with you? Um, so this is, he's talking about ground cover here. Let's go take a look. So to be fair, I do. He's right. It will confuse people. But to be fair, I do have this note here. And this is just not something. You play 15-minute games now because you're a capitalist slave. Oh. <laughs> you should do something about that. I hear there's this game called Morrowind that I've been talking about for about an hour and 15 minutes today. So this isn't something I'm going to fix today. Thank you, Settiness, for calling this out. Because you're right. This is confusing. With this note here, even, it's still, it's confusing. But we can't fix this today. And this is an extension to the other problem of having, so, Gonzo, you may recall, we've talked about this, how, ideally, this is our, this is our plug-in data. And, you know, we have something like this where we, we associate some data with the plugin, you know. And now we're effectively re, we're re-implementing mlocks. That's what I have just did right here. It's not the same. mlocks probably has way different things that it does, but more or less at a, at a high level, mlocks has a YAML. If you look at their U rules, the rules for mlocks, it's a YAML file. And it's basically doing something like this with metadata about a, a plugin should go before this, after that, conflicts with this, the other thing, you know. Um, but this is what really is going to be, it's going to be a two-part thing because we have normal content plugins that ha already have some kind of a, you know, data, defined data here. But we have ground cover plugins which have no data. Ground cover plugins simply live with the mod, this information that uh, Settiness is calling out here, it just simply lives as an extra CFG data field in the mod itself. So really there's gonna need to be, I don't know how we're gonna approach fixing it. Like obviously this works for content plugins, but we have no such data representation for ground cover. So maybe we'll have to like have a ground cover order YAML file with a similar kind of thing here. I don't know. I don't know. But it's a fixable problem for sure. Not going to be fixed today just because I can fix it with duct tape and spaghetti code. That will make my future self sad. So we're not going to do that. Um, and I apologize to anybody who would ever get confused by this who is never going to see this apology. I do really apologize. 
but it's just it's not happening today. This we definitely fixed. What we can do is we can make this the right casing. <sighs> this is another case of you know, random pal ships the plug-in with a capital and Ramiros themselves ships it with a lowercase. Okay, so that's a that's a not fix for today too, until we have just a more sophisticated way of representing ground cover data. Also a not fix. So in the end, we're walking away with a couple changes though here. A couple of uh, case changes. And um is this oh, oh okay and the date change that I missed with the other one with the other one so really so really we're coming away from this with uh, three casing changes for plugins and then the rest will be addressed as we build out a future feature for for better representing ground cover Yeah, okay. I think that we will break. So what we need to do is we need to open a new issue that describes this feature. Similar to how I have one for plugins that sort of describes the need for more data associated with plugins re regarding where they're wanted and not wanted. We need something like that for ground cover, and I'll throw that up on GitLab later today or sometime. I got to think about it. I don't want it to just be nonsense. You know, I want it to actually, you know, describe the need. TR Travels. Oh, yeah, they dropped a bunch of these. They still ship them, but they're nothing buttons. They do nothing. So wait a minute. <sighs> yeah, okay. TR, yep. Oof. This is bringing back bad memories of trying to maintain compatibility with ports of Vardenfell and everything else. Oof. Not fun times. Okay, you know, um, these are going to get deleted. And this TR Travels patch here for BCOM, we're going to annotate it. TR Travels. False. Oh, hey, all right. Thank you, past me. I already did that, but I'm gonna delete the plugin from the database. Well, yeah, it's going away. No need to even mention it. What Santa Hool says, usually I play MF past me. What is what do you mean MF? You MF. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> That's what I thought. Keep it hey man, let's keep it classy, all right. Uh yeah, no longer does anything. It's no longer a thing. Good, too. That's good. I think it's a good thing. The preview stuff was nice to fill in the land, but really you didn't want to go there. 100% replaced. Where did I leave? I know I... Okay. A 
let's take a look here. Honestly, I think this is another. So I think in addition to filing an issue for how do we better represent ground cover, we also need one for data paths because it turns out a lot of these data paths are specific. The use, when you use them, is specific to your context, right? Are you using a mod list, total overhaul? Well, then you don't want 04 reflection mapped. But maybe you otherwise do, right? If you're just using just properly smooth mesh meshes, absolutely you want that. So I'm having a dilemma, and I and this is another one I think we're not going to solve now. And I think I may have already talked about this in a previous stream. So this one, not getting fixed, but we do need to file an issue to describe the feature that we need to solve this part of it. This, I think I did already. This I didn't do, and we went over it, and we said we're going to, you know, we need a different feature for that. Naming incorrect. I think this is solved now. Hey, hey, all right, let's see. Rem underscore. Um, yeah, fixed. Yep. Don't try that at home, folks. Needs closing. Graphical overhaul. Oh yeah, I think we looked at this one. I think we looked at this one before. This is, uh, what is the cell here? Location in Balmora. Halalu Council Manor. Let's have a look. I believe we did this before. Let's have another look. Cell again, Lalu Council Manor. Let's have a look. Oh my. I've got my UI mods crossed. All right. Yeah, I distinctly remember looking at this. I think this might have been fixed. Yeah, I think this might have been fixed by that. This is it. There's our girl right there. Fixed. File by me. My favorite label. Interesting. Benjamin Winger, the author of Delta Plugin, has created a new program that I noticed this morning, last night, called Ground Cover FI. And I'm not 100% sure what it does, but it apparently is using some new record filtering features that are in development for Delta Plugin. 
And all I got to say is anything whatsoever to make producing ground cover easier is extremely welcome. So, yeah, let's actually, let me... take a quick look at that let's get into hype mode here ground cover if I yeah here it is simple Python script which uses Delta plug plugin to turn regular ground cover in Morrowind plugins into open MW style ground cover so I'm not really sure what that means I really need to hop back into their make matrix channel um, Benjamin has a matrix channel for port mod and I was hanging out there for a while. Um, I really don't like Matrix for many reasons. Um, it's like a bad copy of Discord that nobody wants to use because it's not Discord. Anyways, um, I'm very fascinated by this, you know. Because um, I what made me think of that is, you know, this issue... could be This mod could be made compatible a lot more easily with BCOM with the right tooling. And I think on some systems, this kind of thing will make a big difference with performance because ground cover takes a different code path than like static rendering. Um, so it's like definitely something that we want, you know. Um, anyways, I think this is already fixed. And so the, the fix action for this one was to remove it from mod lists, which I have done. I think I actually removed it from all mod lists, which was maybe a little overkill. Because it should still be on... Yeah, I did drop it from all lists. It should still be on lists that don't have BCOM. I'm not going to plug it back in there right now, though, because I just... I want to... I want to look at it first. But note that if you are a user of iHeartVanilla, you can probably slap this in there with no trouble. Um, the, the, the potentially spicy thing about it is that it has a content plugin and a ground cover plugin that need to work in tandem because the content basically tells the engine, yo, all those statics, they're now no longer. And then the engine will, in a way that is not really exposed via the construction set yet, know that it's ground cover and do the right thing and take the happy rendering path that is cheaper. So anyways, yeah, that's another one for my favorite uh, label here. Needs closing. All right. Hot diggity. We got four that need closing here. I mean, dare I say we might be approaching less than 100 issues within the next few weeks here. I mean, this is exciting. All right. Sturdy. That one's going to get closed. That one closed. Wow, so yeah, like really like that's probably gonna be more than ten issues. Clean version, not available. I think I fixed this too. If not, should be an easy fix. Archive.org, yeah, that's a boom, that's another already done issue. So let's go ahead and add my favorite label. And going forward, you know, we'll just uh, we'll do a better job of like keeping this stuff up to date. New beast bodies. Okay. Pad. I think we I think we basically finished this lily pad mod thank you for the link to the website Ramiros mod graveyard all right and so Gonzo what I'm gonna do is following this stream probably gonna go get lunch but then during lunch I'll 
you know, we'll basically prepare to uh, close all these and launch 5.5. Thank you and congratulations on our second release together. Feels good. I think Gonzo says, heck yeah, I think you might need to adjust that 100 issues goal. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> might be coming sooner than we think. You know, I just, I got so behind on all this and like dealing with issues and stuff is kind of my kryptonite. I'm not going to lie. You know, I like to do the thing. It's not that I don't love interacting with users and, and giving feedback and getting feedback and stuff. That's all like I'm completely blessed to have people doing this for me. But yeah, it blows up, you know. And then it becomes it becomes like an entire day of doing this, and that's not really. I'd rather go pull weeds if I'm not lying. <laughs> All right, uh, Bloom Linear. Uh, okay. All right. I think this person might have been confused. Blessed. Yes, that's right, Santa Hools. I am. I am really blessed. Never really wanted or expected anybody to use this website and here I am, you know, I've got somebody on discord telling me it's one of the best mod lists out there. I mean, that's like, wow, that's pretty cool. Let's keep it going. Huh? All right. So I do say right here, the shader comes with open MW. There's no need to install anything extra. Gonzo says, it's really true, especially as far as documentation. It's totally unmatched. Wow. Well, thank you, man. I really appreciate that. Um, you know, like professionally, a documentation is something that I just like doing, you know, to kind of give a, a sh another shameless plug to my wine wrapper. You know, I mean, like this is just something I wrote for fun for myself that I never expected anybody else to use. But I did really want to make sure, like, I got some good, exquisite documentation here, you know, like. All of it. It even comes with the... Uh, I even wrote a man page into it, you know? Like, that's just how I do. So thank you. I appreciate that. It really means a lot to me. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to make this bold as well. And then if people don't see it, there isn't really much I can do about that. Okay. And I'm not going to... Put a change log entry. I'm not going to bump the date on this one. I'm just going to make the change sort of clandestinely. I'm going to tag the issue here. Oh my, here we go. All right, I typo my passwords so much because I change them regularly, of course, like all you do, I'm sure, right? Right? All right, Um, and I'll, I'll respond to this uh, individual later on and just let them know, hey, I'm sure they figured it out. But just to kind of put that out there, Answer these questions three. <laughs> what is your favorite color? All right. So, yeah, I'll respond to this fella later on. This is a good question. And I think, you know, especially like when you get to the point in the mod list where you hit this, look, it's number 401. If your brain isn't melted by the time you get here, kudos <laughs> you know so it's like I cannot fault anybody for missing this like should be in the description honestly you know what I'm saying yeah haha so true exactly like if your brain isn't melted you know if you're not like four weeks into this wow you know <laughs> takes you at least a week off and on yeah yeah exactly and that's the way to do it really um 
whether you use something like Mod Organizer to help you out, you really should still just take your time. There's no point in rushing it. And I'm going to cite my man Peter Norvig here. Maybe I talked about this in a prior stream where he says it's going to take you 10 years to learn programming. What's the rush? And that's absolutely 100% true in my experience personally. Um, so, okay, here's what I'm going to do. Actually, I'm going to put this in the description. Yeah. And I'm going to make it bold up there. And this will be to the poor, tired souls going through the 400-plus mod list. That's going to be close to 500 when we're done with 6.0, maybe even more than 500. Easily, when you think of all the normal maps for everything, there's like 40 mods right there. Boom. Hopefully an easier call out for the poor, tired souls out there. If I can actually type. Speaking of poor, tired soul. It's a gloomy day out here, by the way. I don't know if you can tell by the backdrop on here. My arm looks kind of blue. Wow, that's weird. Uh, the shader comes with open. There's no need to install anything extra for it. Just press F2 while in game to activate it via the shaders menu. And, uh, you know, if I may just demonstrate. For you folks out there in YouTube land, probably watching this after the fact, wondering what the hell is he talking about? You hit F2 when you're in game. You're not going to see all this, but you are going to see this. And it will probably be over here. And, yeah, you just, you know, it'll be over here like this. You click the arrow. Boom, you got Bloom Lanier. It's going to be that easy. And then if you want to, you can go ahead and like change these values. I didn't mess with any of it. I think uh, the excellent developers of OpenMW have given a good default that works pretty good. That shader alone, Bloom Lanier, is enough to really like spice up the game, especially the lights. If you use Waza's light fixes, which will be another 6.0 edition, it can really spice up the lights, actually. Let's uh, and to show you what I'm talking about. We'll go into my favorite player home mod, the Abandoned Flat. I was working on it a little bit last night. I have a actually a um, preservation project on GitLab for it where I uh, am preserving it. But yeah, just look at the lighting in here. It's cool. The lights look cool. Between improved lights for all shaders, Waza's light fix, you know, it just has very atmospheric look. Um, my home away from home. And yeah, just to share with you folks out there on the internet land, I don't have this on any mod lists. It used to be the player home on the mod lists. But then I kind of, whoops. I kind of had this guilt about being too opinionated. Because all kinds of great player home mods out there. Nerevar's house mod being a excellent one. But there's many, 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 many more out there. And so I felt a little guilty about Because the Abandoned Flat was my personal first experience, not only with Morrowind mods, but with mods in general. It was the first mod for anything that I used. Um, honestly, if I think back, I was I just built my first gaming PC in 2003. And, and of course, I wanted to play Morrowind. I had beaten it on Xbox already at that point, And I wanted to play Morrowind with these mods I keep hearing about. And like I knew Jack about computers then. I was way in over my head. Um, somehow, I managed to find this mod. It was the only mod I found and installed it. And, yeah, it's a player home mod that's just... You know, right here on the show by the Vivek Foreign Quarter, and, and there's a lot more to it than meets the eye. Um, so anyway, yeah, I got this little tribute project, Mad Props to Ghost Who Walks, this person I'll never meet, who made this mod 20 years ago. Yeah, all right. Little diversion there. Check it out on my GitLab. I might upload it to Nexus. There's already an upload of it um, on there. Somebody calls it a rare mod. I'm not sure what that is. But I don't know that they actually like... So one of the things I did is I... um. Clean, dirty records, fix broken scripts where possible, I say, because one of the broken scripts is referencing some other script that simply doesn't exist. So, like, 
I have no way of knowing what the mystery script was supposed to do, so I just disabled the script that calls the non-existent script, and that's fixing it as best as I could. I'm not really sure what's broken. Um, and then I re-implemented buff spells as curses. So there's a, in the abandoned flat, in a secret area, there's like a, a script that when you get close to a certain object, it'll buff your stats. But it does it using abilities. And if you don't know about the low-level implementation details of Morrowind, spells have actually like types. And an ability is a spell that will um, buff the base value of a stat or attribute. And that causes problems for mods like NCD, D, MW, Lua Edition. Because it calculates your attributes from your base stats. So when you walk up to these areas, you're suddenly like leveling up. And then when you walk away, you're suddenly leveling back down. And it's a little jarring. It's a little stupid. So by implementing them as curses, I will actually be a modifier instead of modifying the base. And NCGD MW Lua Edition ignores all modifiers. So you get no false level up messages. Um... I'm not actually sure if curses work in Morrowind.exe, but I would expect that's something that the MGEXE or MWSE folks could easily fix if they haven't already. Um, but yeah, I am trying to actually make this vanilla compatible too. So, Little diversion there. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk on the abandoned flat. <laughs> All right. Ah, uh, yeah. We'll get back to Oscar later on. Right. Okay. Um... We're not going to have ourselves too much. Howdy, howdy. Howdy, Auntie. If you ever see this. Okay, no longer compatible. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool. We need to close this. Uh, yes. All right. Comment. Needs closing label. All right. I'm really happy with how, like, almost this entire first page is getting closed. We might be below 100 today, Gonzo. I mean, I'm hyped. Speaking of hype, this mod is so cool. I really love it. Lighted Dwemer Towers, but unfortunately... TR deprecation wave was felt wide. And uh, this mod just came out and yeah, it's already incompatible. So the solution here really is two things. Yeah, oh, I know. It's remove it from the mod list and wait for Dark Nut to come out of the shadows and update it, I guess. Or somebody else will patch it. Maybe somebody's already done it. Fairly noticeable Z fighting. No good. So yeah, we're just going to, we're going to, not recommend it for now. So let's do that. Cool, super cool mod though. And if you're not aware, it like makes the Dwemer Towers light up at nighttime. There's machinery in there running, doing something. Who knows? You can hear it when you go in there. So it's, you know, within the realm of lore friendliness, I think that uh, they can be lit up. Dark Nuts. Yeah, you, you remove that one. Gonzo says, edited my CFG, removing that one. It's uh, it's one of those sad removals. I reluctantly will remove this. And I'm just going to comment it out. I'm not going to delete it. And um, let's go. So my category architecture is where I assume I... Is that something a patch can fix? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Gonzo says, is that something a patch can fix? Absolutely, without a doubt. Um, I could create a patch for it. I'm not going to do it today. Um, it really depends if it's in the scope of something I could do. Um, it depends on like how it needs to be fixed, right? If it's just Z fighting and you need to like move something around a bit, um, I would have to take a look at, you know, does so... Does Dark not like straight up replace those meshes? Does he editor marker them out make them invisible does he delete them i don't know that's something we could do though gonzo honestly that's within scope of my patch total overhaul patches um shoot you know you got me thinking 
let's should we take a look at this and just see how broken it is? They did give us an example of a place where we could see it. Hot diggity, let's do this. Let's do this. And a dark not lighten. Okay, yeah. Already dutifully deleted it from my config. I really should have commented it out, though. I shouldn't have given up so easy. All right, so let's... Um, Chunzef. I gotta love these Dwemer names. Pretty cool indeed. All right, what's the cell? It's 2317, okay. It being a TR mod is a little intimidating. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, kind of, yeah, yeah. I, I've never really mucked with TR compatibility myself um, uh, outside of like wrongfully using the TR patcher to like force object names to be changed. Um, that's the extent. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, so let's do this. File does not exist. Oh. Lighting. Yeah, I deleted it from my folder even. I just jumped the gun on that one a little bit. Let's try that again. But yeah, I think this is within the good call out, Gonzo. This is within the realm of something we could fix. Um, and I'm thinking it will probably boil down to make the vanilla mesh for the Dwemer Tower invisible. And number two, maybe fix the positioning of Dark, Nut, Dark Nut's Tower a little bit if it's awkward. Um, and that should honestly be really easy. If that's all it is, we're going to have a patch for that today. All right. So let's see. And here we are. And let's go ahead and uh, oof, big oof, right here. So Can you see what we're doing here? If I move my mouse right here, I've got where we have two objects that are basically on top of each other. And really all we should need to do, hold up. Z fighting gone. Now this isn't actually how we're gonna patch it, but it's pretty darn close. I'm basically going to go into the CS. We're going to do it right now, friends. Going to go into the CS. We're going to editor marker that mesh. Seems like a similar issue to the ghost gate, Gonzo says. Hide that NIF. You got it, friend. And so um, there is probably um, that thing that I just disabled, this uh, X dwarf enter. Yeah, okay. It's provided by TR Mainland. Uh, added by TR mainland. So I'm guessing it's from the TR data set. So I could go, I, I should be able to basically filter items in the CS, find the TR meshes for the Dwemer ruins, and yeah, hide them as Todd intended. Hey, cool. All right, so let's, let's try to do that. I actually rather like ending the streams with a little bit of CS hacking. And I think I will revert the Welcome to the Arena patch. I'll branch it off uh, just in case it ends up being needed. But for now, I'm going to revert it. That's not going to go into the... It's not going to be number six after all. Okay, um, we're going to create a new add-on. Takes a minute to crunch um, because 
the CS, which I saw now fully at the CS object tool, bullet object tool, and the um, mesh generator tool all now fully support portable mode, which is how I run everything. Mad props to Elsid. You're the man, and I love you. But Elsid recently fixed that, and it's going into OpenMW 0.48. And I mean that's extremely exciting for me. Having the um having the mesh generator in portable mode is huge because I haven't been able to do that. And you know, if you played OpenMW recently, you know that there's quite a bit of stuttering from that. So okay, anyway, back to business. Dark nut light it. Let's select the master here. And the name of this light uh, we can change that file name if we want to all right and let's go ahead and go to that cell in particular uh 23 minus 17. Sundered Scar region looks right. Okay. Okay, you can see the Z fighting right here. Right, I don't think the towers actually are problematic here. It's just this one. X, dwarf, enter, zero, zero. So what will we do now? <laughs> Smalio says, the world looks so small when you zoom out so much. Yeah, actually, um, it's really interesting to like just into cheat mode and fly way high up and you can see basically all of Tamriel. Some, some folks have their work in progress plugin where you can see all of Tamriel looking like a little stamp. And then you disable flying and you fall down and that's really neat. You can fly above the clouds and then fall through them. All right. Let's get filter crazy here, shall we? All right. Oh, there we go. Okay, good. <laughs> it was lagging a little. It's so it, the, the CS is cl clearly chugging under the load of you know the whole total total overhaul setup. Technically, we can load expanded vanilla, or we could like configure my minimal setup to have just these. I might end up doing that um, just for the sake of having this load more quickly. Um, so anyway, what well, what are we doing here? We're gonna narrow down objects. We want things that are in the cell twenty three minus seventeen. And you can see my and filter up there. I am anding these. Oh, man, it's so slow. Jeez. 2317 and a ref ID of... I have to mouse over that thing again. Oh, no. There we go. Object ID... And this is going to, if I just do X, Dwerve, Enter, zero, zero. X, Dwerve, Enter. And this will match both the original and Dark Nuts modified one. There we go. Yeah, we got two of them there. Looks about right. So, if I were more naive and didn't have the benefit of receiving wisdom from Random Pal, I might simply delete this and call it a day, right? Let's just erase it. That's the problem. It's there. To solve it, we make it not there. Boom. Easy enough, right? But we have actually been blessed with the knowledge that deleting is not the best approach. So what do we do? I'm going to clone the object. Give it a... M-O-M-W suffix, underscore M-O-M-W suffix. 
our friend, editormarker.nif. And then we're going to change the base record to use our new invisible object. And just like that, we fixed this one in a way that is clean and hopefully pretty compatible. And so now, you know, we have to fix this for every tower that's out there. So let's just go ahead and erase our specific query here. Ooh, okay. And it looks like they all use the same one. Oh boy. Is it really going to be this easy? <laughs> let's see here. Can I bulk edit these, please, please, please? No. Okay. Womp. But, thankfully, Gonzo says, totally, it's uh, an aesthetic, it's totally an aesthetics thing, but I actually deleted that texture for the ground there. Just looked a little too clean and scaled weirdly. Oh, okay, you mean um, this one with, the like, the bricks and stuff? That's interesting. I could see not loving it. I personally really love it. Um, but that's interesting to note. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. You know, and that see, this is the beautiful thing about modding and also the way that OpenMW allows us to do it. It's super easy to make such a change. The engine practically invites you to do it. So that's cool. Yeah, it is an aesthetics thing. Totally. It totally is. I guess the main thing that, and I can, I hear you on it being a little too clean. The thing I like about it are the parallax maps, which we don't see right now. The CS doesn't load them, but they give you that like... 3D detail on a 2D thing. Um, and I like that. I'm a sucker for that. That's just purely eye candy. So wait. While we're here, though. Um, yeah, nice. Cool. It actually obeys the day-night switch on the mesh even, too. That's really cool. See, OpenMWCS. It's pretty awesome. Gonzo says, yeah, those parala ma parallax maps are sexy. They are, dude. You know, and I think. That's really that's the only thing I got is I like I like that I don't want to not have that, um, yeah I mean that looks pretty good okay so after I have lunch I'm gonna finish this patch up and basically that's gonna involve going through these one at a time which is gonna be a little grueling but the process looks something like this double click on that type in an underscore see my invisible object and press enter and then we know we got that star up there. It says it's registered our change. I hit control S. It's always control S. <laughs> I hear my wife laughing in the other room. Ah, Smolio says, why is that one blue triangle not rendering? It is rendering, actually. Um, that's a great question. If you've never used OpenMWCS before, you may be wondering, what the hell are we looking at here? The So what we're looking at here is the cell 23, 17, where it was indicated to us that this thing lives. And when you load up a cell in the CS, an exterior cell, it only loads one at a time. But what I can do is I can right-click on those blue arrows to load more of the map. So that's what that is. And why does it not load it um, to answer that specific question? Because I only ask for this cell, you know. Maybe a future feature for the CS might be like to uh, load, you know, a grid around that cell or something, you know. Um, but yeah open so much you think that so much but actually the world consists of like you know i don't know probably thousands of cells like this this is nothing really uh so yeah great question smally oh thank you that was really great wow okay well we're almost at time here um gonzo excellent idea to patch this dark nuts thing we don't have to axe it off the list actually we're gonna make a patch um and so so going back to that yeah we're gonna make a patch for this all right it's happening um, but, uh, so, okay. Um, I think what I want to try to do here is we're going to, we're going to cut off 5.5 at this one. Right. Respect. Smi Gonzo gives the smiley face and I, I give it back. We're going to cut 5.5 off at this one. Um, I'm going to work on this after I hang up with, uh, all you out there in internet land, Twitch land, and, uh, I'm going to have some lunch and then we're going to bang this out. It's a little boring for you, I think, to watch me do this, you know. Like, 
I'm actually dreading doing it myself, but hey, you know, once I do it, everybody else can have the patch. So maybe I'll send it to Darknut. I don't know. Um, but I'm gonna, so I'm gonna do this, and uh, we're gonna put a bow on 5.5. I'll go ahead and deploy the beta site right now. Let's get that going. Beta and the staging site getting deployed right now. So all the changes minus this one for Darknut going on there. Um, and we'll review that and get that going. And uh, yeah, so big thank you as always to you, uh, Gonzo, for coming out here and joining me today. And everybody else watching in Twitch and YouTube land after the fact. Happy modding. And I will see you next week.